ba da ba da dum pop goes the breaker. For this build, you'll need a self-retaining push-pull electromagnet, my 3D printed parts, including the button, the nut, and the circuit breaker. You'll need two M3 14mm screws, an empty spot on a relay module, a MobiFlight compatible Arduino, some wiring, whether that be DuPont connectors or soldered wires, and a 12 volt power supply. Links to everything will be in the description below, as well as the tools you'll need. I've also created a blog post with additional schematics. Let's ignore all of the electronics for now, except for the self-retaining electromagnet. So this is different from a solenoid, because a solenoid, uh, you trigger it and it pops out, but when you detrigger it, it pops back in. For this one, you trigger it, it pops out, you detrigger it, or remove electricity, and it stays out. It's a magnet. You can see it click in both positions. With this electromagnet, it depends on which way you flip the wires. So if you connect positive to positive and negative to negative, when you apply power, it'll flick out. But if you apply positive to negative and negative to positive, it'll flip back in. So you can simulate both the flipping out and the flipping in, which is cool. With solenoids, you can only trigger the uh, flicking out. Flicking out on when power is connected and it turns back off when power is disconnected. This one, power connects, it pops out, you swap which pins and it comes back in. So the construction of this is quite simple. Put the button on top of the cap here, it slides on, and then put the circuit breaker housing in through here. It's really quite simple. Uh, the only things are you might have to get rid of some of the supports right here just by kind of getting needle nose pliers and kind of scraping it off, uh, but that's about it. So I can just put the button in, line it up with its notches so it doesn't turn around, put the circuit breaker in, press it through, and you'll want this to be really easy to press back and forth. If you need to, you can adjust the tolerances or how much gap there is in the model I've provided. Uh, it's provided in the Thingiverse link and you can adjust the slide toll um, that parameter in the Fusion 360 model to make it uh, quicker to slide or if it's too loose you can decrease that to make it tighter. So you have this solenoid with, attached to the button it clicks but if you press the button this pops out so I've attached two screws uh, only one is really necessary so if you don't want to do both more power to you. So now we have these end stops attached and this circuit breaker won't fly out, which is kind of a luxury. You can attach the nut and the construction is finished. This profile and everything is actually standardized to my old circuit breakers I made in the switch panel video. So if you want to check these out and upgrade your circuit breakers, they should fit into the existing space, which is kind of awesome. These are actually to the real profile of a Tyco, uh, I forgot, like W58 circuit breaker. So I try to get the dimensions as closely as possible, just so it'd look real and fun. Let's do a quick test to see how the electricity works. Um, just a crude demonstration. Right here, the outer sleeve, or the outside contact right here, is mi minus. And the inner contact right here, when you put this, the inside is positive for these DC adapters. When we attach the positive, to the positive inside and the negative to the negative outside. Uh-oh. Did my little brother unplug it? There we go, it popped out. Uh, this is actually a little bit less than it has in the past. I'll bring over one of my other circuit breakers. This is another one. This one over here, you pr put power to it and it pops out immediately. So this one, has a little bit more friction inside of it. So what you can do is take it apart, you can sand it down a little, you can even put some of what I call patience spray. It usually helps to have this and a fair bit of patience in your prototyping. 
And if you need to, you can just spray a little tiny bit in there and get it to slide easier. Now you can see it pops out the full amount. Really one of the weaknesses with this design is the support structure. If you have support residue, uh, then this won't trigger very well because there's going to be stuff left over clogging it up. So really want to make sure to clean up the supports to make sure it functions properly. I also like this sticking up. Originally in my design I hated it because it doesn't look exactly realistic. There's no thing hanging off there. But it lets you trigger the circuit breaker without applying electricity which is something I like to use to test how much friction it has in here. So to recap, whenever we put the positive to positive and the negative to negative and apply voltage, it pops. It doesn't unpop. One of the things I really need for me and my design is a temporary trigger. If you leave it on, this uh, electromagnet right here might overheat and I don't want that to happen could install an avionics fan if we want to, and a much more effective solution would actually just be... Trevor, are you down here? Well, let's go upstairs. We're watching Random Acts and having a party with Papa! <laughs> Since this, I don't think, is re rated for continuous use, uh, we're going to have a trigger mechanism that triggers it for three seconds, then stops. So it'll basically be like this. One, two, three, stop. It's staying out and nothing's happening. So that's great. Now let's put this into practice, figure out how to get it to the Arduino and go for it. This is awesome. We have our power supply right here and our circuit breaker that pops out. But I imagine we want more than one circuit breaker because uh, there is more than one circuit breaker in the Cessna 172. This, my friend, is a breadboard. It's not a board piece of bread, that's different, that's me during class, but you'll see that all of these lines right here connect together. So there's basically a piece of metal that connects all of these wires right here. If you plug in a wire right here into ground, and a wire here into positive, now you can see that these entire lines right here are getting electricity. Now if we attach the positive to the positive rail and the negative to the negative rail, it pops out. If we disconnect it, pop it in, it doesn't pop out. We can pop it out by triggering it here. If we... yeah, let the wires go in and stuff. By the way, there are specific DC to uh, wire adapters so you don't have to do this alligator clip thing. Uh, probably go and get yourself one of those. Those are super helpful. The cool thing about this is you can pop multiple. The first two popped out on their own, but the third one isn't popping out, you'll see. Woo, this is getting hot. <laughs> right now, these electromagnets, this one specifically is getting hot. We're going to unplug it so it doesn't get damaged or anything. This one isn't, which is kind of cool, uh, kind of interesting. Um, it is a little bit now. We're going to unplug it. And then this last one, now when we unplugged the other two, will it work? It does. So we have a problem here because this power supply isn't enough to power all of these at once. We know it can only power two at a time. That has to do with the amperage of this um, power supply. I'm sure if we had a more powerful power supply, we could power multiple at a time, but it looks like our limit is actually two, which I didn't know before. So here I have my three circuit breakers. I have my power supply over here, but we're going to add an element of fun to this, shall we? By the way, this circuit panel is 3D printable. It just barely fits on the print bed. Um, you can see I 3D printed it. That's because the school is closed for the winter and I don't have access to a laser. If you want a complete panel and kit like all of this, uh, go to captainbobsim.com shop. I like this foam. It's bouncy. After a lot of trial and error, I came up with this system. 
It has an Arduino. The ground is connected to the external power ground. All of the input pins are connected to the input pins here. The VCC and ground right here aren't connected um, because it's connected by an external power supply right here. You take off the little jumper pin right here and power VCC to 5 volts, or 12 volts in this case, and ground to negative. This uses a 12 volt power jack and whenever power is applied, everything pops in the out position. This breadboard right here supplies the positive and the negative rail to this solenoid, or electromagnet in this case, and it pops out whenever the pin sends a low signal. This system works fantastically when the Arduino is all powered on. If I press test in MobiFlight, the circuit breaker pops out. If I press stop, I have the ability to press it back in. Test. Stop. This is exactly what I want, except this is a reverse logic relay card, meaning it only triggers when the signal is set to low. So if I were to unplug this, it would set the signal to low and the circuit breaker would pop out. So you may need to make sure your wires are always attached. Also, if you unplug this Arduino, say, or like, say it breaks, um, then it pops out. So it's not a really redundant system because it depends on the Arduino to be operating to tell it to not push out, basically. It wants to push out by default with this configuration. So even so, say if this Arduino broke or got unplugged by accident, say the USB port died, then we would have a situation right here where all of these circuit breakers are popping out, um, maybe even all at once, which is not good because it um, have too much current for the power supply. Also, these circuit breakers can get quite hot. It's an electromagnet, so there's a little coil that electricity is going through, and basically um, it's sending heat through, but no work is done, so it's creating heat right now. I couldn't figure out a really great way with the logic system of the relay card to make it only turn on when the Arduino tells it to turn on. So if you have any suggestions, leave them in the comments below. I'd love to see your ideas. In my actual simulator, this would be on a power strip that would get unplugged every time I stop flying and plugged back in every time I start flying. So this wouldn't really be an issue. Uh, but for a casual simmer that just leaves everything plugged in always, this could be an issue. My advice would be to just plug it in every time you want to fly and unplug it every time you're done flying. I'm going to release a new video once I figure this all out, so uh, we'll keep you posted. So eventually I'd like to change this to a MOSFET or a relay card that doesn't have reverse logic. Still need to do more research, admittedly. But uh, this is a good enough system for now. I don't think it'd make it to the final sim though. This is a complicated wiring setup, so let's start at the very beginning. A very good place to start. We will begin with our switcher, our Arduino. This controls whether it's sending a high or an on, or a low or an off. This relay card is the next thing we're going to add. But this relay card adds a level of complexity because it deals with reverse logic. It's kind of like reverse psychology, where it does whatever you don't want it to do. So if you send a high message saying turn on, it says, okay, I'm going to turn off now. It's kind of just a mean person in that regard. So this relay card, we actually don't want to power off of the 5 volts that comes from the Arduino. That could work, um, and I've done it, but I want to have the ability to disconnect the power supply because of its reverse logic. So that's where this breadboard comes in. And with the breadboard comes the positive and negative rails. Right here on this DC coupler there's a plus and a minus for a little standard power supply. I'm putting the minus to the minus and the plus to the plus. Now when you plug this in, all of these receive 12 volts of power. If you unplug it, it doesn't receive anything and it's all safe, nothing will burn up. So we want to power this to this. So 
if you were going to power it by the 5 volt on board Arduino, you would use this ground and VCC, but instead you plug out the little pin right here connecting these two pins and you connect VCC to positive and this little ground right here to negative. So this is cool. Now this 12 volts is powering this side of the relay card, but how do we know that a switch triggers? If you connect a pin right here, say to a random input pin, input output pin, connect something from pin 13 to IN1, this is the input one that tells the relay to trigger. This is great, but there's actually no circuit, so we need to continue connect 5 volts to this VCC, the middle pin. So there's 5 volts up here. We can connect that to, let's see, this middle pin right here. Now we want this 12 volts right here to pop out this electromagnet. If we plug this in, now if we set this red wire to negative, this black wire to positive, it pops out. That made me like jump a little bit. This is how the electromagnet works, but we want it to be fired by this relay right here. So basically this relay is acting as a little switch in the middle of our circuit. So we can connect this black wire to this positive right here, this red wire to this switch, right, the common, um, and there are three little terminals there's the oh shoot <laughs> there's the normally closed common and normally open we're going to connect it to the normally open and the common so um these two basically now we can have a wire from negative to this normally open or to this normally closed and you can see it popped out automatically it should do that whenever you apply power. So I connected it to the normally closed pin and the common pin and now if the Arduino is on and we apply power it doesn't pop out. We can manually trigger it showing there's no electricity going through it. Now if I have everything hooked up the Arduino is on and running the 12 volts is hooked up and if I click test in MobiFlight, I have a configuration that basically sets a high state to pin 13, then it shoots out. If you click stop, you can press it back in, but you can't press it back in until you press stop. If we test fire a pin, and I'll show you how to do this later, our circuit breaker pops out, and it pops out until we press stop. Now it's in its off state, then if we press test again, it'll pop out. This is what we want, but we want it just to happen for a few seconds. Say like, out, one, two, three, stop. And then it just stays out like this. And then we can press it in manually. Press it in manually. Okay, some of my wiring must have gone wrong. There we go. Uh, press it in manually, and it'll stay. So again, out, one, two, three, stop, no power is supplied, so we can press it back in manually. And no power is being applied, so this could be kept in this state, as long as there's no electricity going through here, indefinitely, forever, basically. So this is awesome. You know what else is awesome? You guys. Thank you so much to all the people who helped support this channel, including, but not limited to, Altimeter Motives, Bromine, Chris P, David H, David L, John P, Mr. Klotz, Similaire, Warren, and the people that go to my bank that watch my videos. That makes me happy. Thank you so much for watching, and make sure to check out this video about configuring an LED because the configuration to this is actually pretty similar to an LED.